Hello everybody, welcome to part one of the Lies of P walkthrough. Hope you guys are looking forward to this. There you are. Had a few people asking about it on the channel already. So, first things first, we're just going to move forward here. I don't know how much you guys want me to go over controls. If there's something I feel like I need to point out, I will. Uh, probably the first thing is, you can see we have this left trigger, Arm of Steel very bad at the moment don't use it but it will become more useful later so just be aware that that's there and something that will be useful particularly when it comes to like putting state elements and stuff onto enemies yes uh so actually that actually reminds me the first thing we want to do is start moving some of this around my lower belt i actually like to just keep it as a grinder so you guys can see it a bit but uh weapon durability is an issue in this game that's how I fix it. And then usually I have healing there, a couple of throwing items potentially on the side. These are what I cycle around with. It's a pretty nice system, actually. Maybe an improvement over what we used to. And then this uh, bag here, we actually bring it by holding down A. So if you just want to have like a quick slotable item that's useful, such as the cricket that we just got, which is a light, you can kind of put that in there. Keeps it nice and convenient without getting in the way during combat. So next up then, the, I don't know, it's not mega important decision, but it is going to dictate the first steps you take through the game, which is the starting class. Let's have a quick look at these. I personally think the dex starting class is probably the best one, mostly for the attack speed. And whilst we'll probably spec into advance, maybe part way through the game, when we start getting some elemental attacks and weapons and stuff. Because there's something to bear in mind, even though when I was fighting particularly hard boss, it seemed like it was immune to him. Um, it is, in my opinion, just the nicer start. We don't need heightened vitality yet. Um, the vigor on there, which is basically stamina, is going to last us for a long time as well. Basically, that 12 stamina might put two more points in there. It's also going to last us pretty good. We will want to up the capacity. There are some pretty heavy items you can want to end up equipping on your puppet. So maybe that's something that's kind of a bit lacking there. But ultimately, uh, best all round. But there is a caveat here. You can, I think, have a bit of an easier time with the balanced one. Just because I think the blade on that weapon is a good blade. And the handle is also pretty good. So overall, the balanced weapon is probably the better weapon. But the uh, the poke on the the roof is pretty good. Ah, uh, I'm kind of I'm kind of tall now. But yeah, let's go. Let's go with the decks. It's all interchangeable over the course of the next few episodes. Anyways, we'll have access to all the weapons. It's not like the PVP cap, so you can always get yourself an extra couple of levels if you want to. All those things. So it doesn't really hurt whichever one it is. You decide to go for. Now, something to bear in mind, this game works heavily on parrying. Let me see if we can get one on this first guy here. So you need to bring your guard up at the perfect time when they're about to strike you to get the parry off. They call it, I believe, a perfect guard in this. And... Yes, basically, against a lot of the harder enemies, you're going to want to time that as best you can. Now, the thing that makes the other two classes slightly more forgiving than the puppet we're using right now is if you get that parry slightly early <clears throat> you'll actually already be blocking which is I suppose kind of handy however the rapier has the worst um, guard stat basically so it'll allow the most damage to penetrate the weapon which means basically the blocking side of this weapon right now is worthless Therefore, we kind of actually want to... I'm going to try and drag this guy over without the other two. This is an area right now where you want to kind of think about... ...not um, aggroing full packs. Now, you might have noticed on my health there, and I want to demonstrate it on this guy, even though it's going to be a bit... ...janky. So I'm going to block this guy on purpose. You can see that the damage that has penetrated is now in like a translucent shade of red and as I attack I'm able to recover some of it but we didn't, didn't even get all of it back there because of you know it doesn't exactly 
allow us to regain tons of it. If you look in your stats here, uh, we have damage reduction while guarding, which I think is the amount that it actually mitigates. And then we should have it. I can't see it on there. It should be guard regain is also a stat, which is how much it will, uh, how quickly, I believe, how quickly, yeah, it will allow you to regain the damage. Now, luckily, these first few enemies are completely stun like a bullet you can see. So we don't need to worry about them too much, especially on an individual basis. And then in this room, I think we're supposed to be practicing uh, perfect guards against ranged attacks. And I don't like doing that. I don't do that at all. But something I do like to do here is we're going to sprint on over. Exercise our right to backstabs. Um, quite a lot of enemies are pretty susceptible to it. So if you can get used to looping around and getting that off without locking on, that's going to be extremely useful to you. I don't know if you can do it to melee ones as easy. Yeah, you can. <clears throat> so it's just a pretty nice thing to do. You can't do it to everything, but um, it is useful. And anybody that's played Bloodborne will probably be used to the idea of trying to do some engagements without a lock-on. Damn it. Hit the wall. So as you saw, he's kind of waiting on that side just there. And usually, if you kind of like get the right point just here, you can kind of just strike slightly past it to start that encounter without him hitting you. So just uh, just a bit of a way of saving some some trouble there. There might that's a throwable fire weapon. It's actually very powerful. However, in my experience, we don't get much of it to drop. Um, so I'm, I'm generally speaking a bit trepidatious. I think maybe that's the wrong word. I'm a bit reluctant to use things like that because we just don't get them back very much. Here's where it's trying to teach us a backstab. Well, then you can go and poke, 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 poke. So, during my first kind of time through here, I did kind of go a bit slowly with some of these just to. Attempt to get some parries off. This game is so parry heavy. I can't even... I can't even... Uh, <laughs> over, I can't overstate how much you're going to parry in this game. At all. Okay, so we take this one out. This seems to start that one. And there's another one on the left patrolling. It's very difficult to get these to separate. But if we just move to the left slightly... We should get this guy to see us. Excuse me. Excuse me. Usually does. Oh, yeah. Uh, his friends come. It's not the end of the world. Just not how I like to take them on. Sawtooth wheels. They're a little bit like... Throwing daggers from Souls games, they do very little damage, but they're good for drawing enemies over. But again, they don't drop often enough that I use them a lot. Okay, and I think that's pretty much all of the upper area looted. Which means... It is time for us to descend the stairs. Now, I don't believe we have a Stargazer here. Or do we? Which means, the first time facing this, uh, let's go with elite enemy here. Can't actually reset our health using Stargazer, which is a shame. Potential for death here, because he hits pretty hard. Been a few days since I've faced one, so therefore, parrying may well be off a little bit. Ouch. You used to just combos. Where's your combo? So in this one, you're likely to get a few more. Um, a few more... What's the word? Tool tips come up. Because we're likely to want to be using 
the crit attacks on this. I think they're called fatal strikes, actually. This is nice. Harry! Damn it. Wasn't expecting the third one there. Keeps on randomizing how far he's going to uh, go with his combo. There we are. So now that we have that, because we have the rape, we can actually step back a little bit. Let's get a charged attack off. And then we can get on in with an R1, and that's going to do good amounts of damage. Now, whilst he's getting back up, we really want to get that in. 15, it does give you a lot though. He is a good boost in Ergo, this game's main currency. And that's where, that, okay, now did I get that turned around? I can't even see where I am. <coughs> sorry, I'm a little bit ill. I'm sorry if you guys see me like clear my throat out a little bit. Who got that done? That was actually uh, more successful than I thought we were going to be. Now, here's a cool tip. Uh, when you were on your last heal, you might as well use it. This is because, um, basically, as you hit enemies, it'll, you'll regenerate another one, as long as you don't have any left. So you can't regenerate from one to two, but you can always regenerate, regenerate from zero to one, which is a good way of kind of extending how far your reach is. But I think, I think this is just a single dog on the right-hand side. Let's do this. Yeah, single, single dog over here, I can kind of just sh hopefully show you guys. Come here. So if I hit this, you'll see it starting to build up. All right, when I get to the top, we get a new one. And you hear, you hear like the ping sound. It happens during the... Uh, during the, uh, the fight with the police puppet, right? Um, so it is a fairly decent way, especially like against these lighter enemies where you can just keep hitting them. Really decent way to get a little bit of extra healing. You know, if you're like near the end, or you feel like you know, I've got to move forward to get to a to get to a checkpoint. It's good to know, that, you know, like once you've got it, if you if you've taken health damage, just use it because you might as well be generating the next heal. In any case, we are going to go ahead and interact with the first stargazer, which is going to allow us to do some leveling. make things a little bit easier on ourselves. We don't need capacity right now. I don't think. My aim is to stay in the very light yes. part. However, it gets a bit difficult because some of the amulets are incredibly heavy. So we get three levels. Definitely one into health. Definitely one into technique. Five damage. Just, it's not very much. Um... We're not, we're not going to be worrying about Vigor very much. So let's let's make up for our lack of vitality here. And a tiny amount of damage. Now then, this is the first and easiest part. And for whatever reason, they gave us a ton of enemies around here. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to clear the entire perimeter. And I'm going to recommend you guys do this a couple of times. Not necessarily for the Ergo, but just get some parries in there. Because you are going to want to try and learn at least a few timings. Otherwise, you're going to have some real problems as we go around. All parryable, including these. Um, I'm sure somebody's going to be like, "Hey, wait a minute!" So we parry the enemies, and they don't give us—they don't give us any crits. No, not instantly. Like you can parry a few times, but with these, you might as well just be attacking them. So I suppose we could do backstabs if we want to like, really end some of these a bit quicker. Because I'm not locked on, I was blocking the wrong way there. We'll go ahead. We'll do one lap together. Why not? And then I'll show you how we get past most of them without having to fight them all the time. Now, I'm not usually a fan of grinding these kinds of games, but um, I honestly do not blame you if you do that in this game. <laughs> like, grind that health out if you have to. Yes, I know we can use build items, just using not too many.
Okay, there's quite a lot of dogs here. Where are they all? So the reason I've gone... Which is probably anti-clockwise. It's because if you come the other way, there are a load of dogs. Where are they all? I'm sure there's like four of them. There you. Oop. Where's the rest? There's one. Yeah, so they're, oh, they're kind of all not aggroed together. When I came here when I was streaming and doing the practice for this, a load of the wall came over together when I aggroed that first dog. Can't see where the rest are. Ah, they hid him behind the carriage. Oh, no. <laughs> it's all stun like a wall. Keep it all in front of you and, uh... <laughs> Just, just poke them to that, it's fine. Go ahead and grab that. We want to get all the uh, collectibles and stuff. This, this trophy is kind of tied to all of this. Now I'm going to try and speak about where... Like some of the things we need for trophies are. How much do we need for a level? 824 and I'm on... Okay, so if I've got a Ergo item, we... And level, which I think we do. Yeah, just a hundred. Look. Why not? I'm going to aim for like 15 vitality, maybe. Um, it's, it's mostly just a buffer, really. Okay, so now we can continue moving forwards. We lost my train point, I was thinking about a second ago. Right, so, from here... I don't know if we need to interact with these. Oh yeah, that's what I was talking about. So, like... Uh, you are going to need to do New Game Plus to get all of the records. So that means two full playthroughs, and you basically have to alternate telling lies and telling the truth with certain NPCs. In any case, get through here without fighting too much. We want to head straight on over this way. We need to be careful of the uh, the one puppet on the right-hand side, that is patrolling. This one can aggro from pretty far. I've gotten away with it here. It's not, like, the hugest issue. Like... You know, go ahead and take them out, it's not like the worst. But if we're trying to get through here quickly... Oh, I feel like it's a good idea just to kind of do that, right? That way, if you do have any accidents or something, you don't have to keep on moving back through. This is going to be a shortcut for later, just in case somebody's... I need to go through that door! Then we can sneak on around here for... Backstabius. It's a shame this is not a thing that allows us to do very often, where there's like an alternate path to... Uh, Make life easier for ourselves. He's going to come round. Again, we can walk up to this guy. It's going to uh, go nice and easy. Also note, you are not in invincibility frames joining the backstab. So that long animation, if there's enemies around you, they're going to get you. What about you? It really matters right now. Now, there's something I feel like changed from the demo. I was positive during the demo that going along here, there was a dude with like a cannon or something, or something in ranged attack. It doesn't seem to happen here. Instead, we're going to get a dude with a big axe, and it's really annoying because I absolutely cannot read this enemy's attacks at all. Now then, something that's worth noting, it's not really an issue for me right now. So you can see above the weapons on the right-hand side, I was talking about it earlier. Uh, dur durability is an issue. Obviously, we're just afraid of doing this. Try to avoid doing that to join battle because that is just obviously annoying. Now, you see that red attack? That is not blockable, but it is still parryable if you're fast enough. As you can see, I just really, I really struggle getting the parries off of this guy. It's absolutely not staggerable. 
But with the rapier, we do have a good charge of range. So we can use that to our advantage. And also the standard R2 has a back step to it, which is also kind of nice. Right, so because we've got good range. Now, unfortunately, he is not classed as an elite. He will respawn upon death. So, just bear that in mind if you are going to die a lot. You're going to have to keep fighting him. <laughs> so, here is one where... I would say, like, if you want to use a cog, it's worth it. Where's my... Where's my belt? There's quite a few enemies around the corner. But we can just have this guy come over on his own. Where's the dog? So notice I was technically out of stamina there. <clears throat> but it regenerates fast enough that, generally speaking, it hasn't been an issue for me. So it's, not, it's nice to have, like, some extra surplus of it. It hasn't been the issue that I would say it is in, in other games. That's the drug I was thinking about. Right? I wonder if we can... Nope. <laughs> Probably a little nice. I'm in the middle of the enemies. Whoops. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Bit of loot at a gate that we went by. There is actually fairly friendly, as far as the skin is concerned. Venini. <laughs> I don't know if I should take the uh, take the mick out of what the game does. Right. So should be close to shortcut. Right there. So just to show you guys, this is going to lead us back to where the Stargazer was. That's where the dude was kind of leaning against the, the pillar on the side. And we actually now have access to the other starter weapons. There's an NPC down there that sells them. There's no enemies between us and, and that NPC, so you can literally go get them now. They're only 300 ergo each. And I may even switch myself pretty quickly, because I, I do very much like the Sabre. Table Catalyst. <clears throat> Just checking out if I missed anything. There's a little bit down here we didn't go up, isn't there? There are a lot of nooks and crannies in this game. You have to check them all. Even though I've been through before, that doesn't mean there might not be something here. Just a view. Clear down there already. Yes, the dog. Done, done, done. And done. A powerful parade puppet is blocking the entrance. And that's the only way in. So please. So this you can kind of give yourself a bit of practice if you want. Uh, particularly for like parrying stuff like this. Um, maybe give yourself 60 seconds of just, you know, trying to eyeball parries there if you want. Now we have 
entrance. But it's, I thought there was a lightning. No, I thought there was a, a lightning. Throwable. Now, like I was saying before, throwables are rare enough in this game that I don't recommend using them a lot of the time. This guy, I think, is weak to lightning though, so if you have it, it's going to do pretty good for you. Uh, I'm going to go ahead, let's get a level here. We're going to go with health, maybe. Maybe, maybe. Like, one point of technique is going to do nothing against this boss right now, so... Don't think that's worth it. Hello there. I didn't think you didn't hear. You ought to buy. What I think will alone? be worth it. We're currently doing that ninety-one a slash, and that's going to do one hundred and twelve. Yes. So this is just too slow. The blade on it is just too slow. Like you could use the handle. Handle's fine. Uh, but the blade is just slow, and until we can switch stuff around, uh, that isn't worth it. But I very much do like this. So, I am going to have a quick run around and defeat some enemies. And I'm going to go ahead and purchase that. Before we move on to the clown enemy, which is going to be the next episode. For those that haven't followed my series before, I do like to separate bosses out for those that are looking for them. It's going to be a bit difficult because there are a lot of mini bosses. That I will want to do videos for as well. But, um, yeah. Hopefully, you guys are enjoying the series, or at least the beginning of it. And I'll catch you all again very soon.